so good morning everyone so today we will start with the next topic fast fourier transform yesterday i already told you that fast fourier transform it is not a transform in itself however it is a method to implement dft okay wherein the number of calculations are pretty less okay so in other words you can say fft is a faster way to implement dft in computers okay so fft it can it can be implemented in two ways first one is the dit fft and the second is the dif fft okay <coughs> dit fft and dif fft so dit means decimation in time and uh, dif means decimation in frequency what do we mean by uh, decimation decimation we means that we want to uh, what do you call reduce some uh, signal length okay decimate means destroy okay in uh, general words so here in decimation means just breaking up of the signals right so we will look into the thing when when i talk about the decimation in time so it means the sequence of the signals that needs to be fed into the fast fourier transform okay so what i mean to say over here is that uh, in dit fft when we talk about dit fft the input to the fast fourier uh, fast fourier transform algorithm will be the time axis which has been arranged in the uh, when we have uh, when we perform the decimation uh, in time for that signal okay so you can say decimation in time order basically so ordering of the signal components as per the decimation in time okay so when we perform dit the, uh, the frequency components they are in normal order okay when we talk about decimation in frequency the time order it is in normal order like x0 x1 x2 x3 whereas the frequency is uh, it is in the decimation in the uh, in the uh, decimation in the frequency order okay so let us understand what i meant to say through an example so before we diverge into the details the first important thing is to understand how the fast fourier transform it works and what is the algorithm so here in you can see there is an architecture which has been given and this architecture is regarded as butterfly architecture butterfly architecture okay so here in the computation happens between two numbers always so two numbers are taken uh, then there is a computation then those number goes forward in the next level also the another two numbers will be taken and they will be used for the computation purpose okay so these lines these are basically the movement of the signal components okay here a is a signal component b is a signal component so at the upper node if you see we are having a which is directly moving from here to here so we get a then here we have an addition node so we get this addition then b into e to the power minus j 2 pi k divided by n it should be uh, pi k small n also okay basically it is a it is a total factor okay it is a total factor so we have a plus b into total factor right in the next one if you see the signal is moving in this way and this a it is coming in this way and this way so a is coming minus of because there is a minus 1 multiplier in between in the lower leg so we get minus of b multiplied by 
total factor a minus so on the upper arm you see a plus b w n and the lower arm it is a minus b w n okay now let us uh, understand what we what i mean by the decimation in time order okay suppose we are having a signal xn now here in what we have is that x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 the signal components are there okay now if i have to decimate and take the odd components and the even components uh, separately so if you say x0 it has come over here x2 x4 then x6 similarly x1 x3 x5 x7 okay now again we have to decimate it because in the butterfly architecture i told you that we will work with only two signal component so if you see if we again decimate it x0 and x4 it comes on the left hand side and then we are having x2 and x6 similarly over here also x1 x5 and then x3 x7 you see the in the first case all the odd components they have come to the left x0 x then we leave one it comes over here x2 comes here so x1 has gone over there x2 comes here then x3 gone over there x4 has come over here are you choosing that position what the meaning are you choosing that positions we are choosing the uh, in other words you can say the position but what are x x0 it is an amplitude x0 is an amplitude x1 is an amplitude x2 is an amplitude so basically you are choosing the numbers which are present in a specific location x0 means so this is the origin right so first origin then second point if you leave one go to the next one then that one then fourth one then sixth one in that way now again when you have decimated at the first stage you have got this signal okay so again you are choosing zero x2 goes to the right x4 comes over here x is come has come over here similarly over here also x1 x3 x5 x7 so suppose i have given 16 digit uh, a signal which is having 16 component so what you have to do you have to repeat this process till <clears throat> at the end we get a pair of numbers at the end terminal or the end node okay so once you get this now this sequence x0 x4 x2 x6 x1 x5 x3 x7 this is called the dit order decimation in time order okay similarly for a, a, sig a signal of eight component if i implement if i want to implement uh, the fast wave transform in the Uh, using the DIF A50, then again capital X zero, which is the frequency domain. So the frequency would be in this order: X zero, X four, X two, X six, X one, X five, X three, X seven. You get my point. <clears throat> so this order can also be computed by bit reversal order. bit reversal order so what is that in the natural order what you have x0 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 then if you want to break it down into the binary uh, this thing so what you have 1 2 4 so 0 so uh, why 1 2 4 because we are only having eight positions so we can so it is a three bit signal we can say 
since it is a skewed signal i have taken 1 2 4 otherwise i could have taken uh, 1 2 4 8 in that way okay so what happens x0 it can be written as 0 0 0 x1 in this way i hope everyone knows uh, how to you know, do this right so we have done this now what we have to do what is the least significant bit this is the least significant bit and this is the most significant bit now what we will do we will mirror the uh, order or these numbers so now lsb it becomes the msb in the bit reversal order and msb becomes the lsb so similarly see LSB it has become the MSB and here MSB has become the LSB and the middle one it has become it has remained the same okay if it would have been a 4 bit number so uh, say for example triple zero one it would have been specially x1 so it would become one zero 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 this thing you just reverse the order that's why it is called bit reversal and so in this way if you get the bit reversal order <coughs> and then you come to the decimal form again convert it to the decimal form again x0 x4 x2 x6 x1 x5 x3 x7 it is the same order what we computed through the decimation of the same okay. <clears throat> now coming to the DIT F50 so what happens first we are having a two point DIT F50 so we have x0 x1 so x0 x1 it is already in the paired form so we need not to decimate it right so what happens x0 x1 we have this butterfly architecture it is a 2 point dft so w 0 2 in the lower part so whenever you are pairing it up you draw an uh, draw an imaginary line so below this you know imaginary line you will be having the total factors so if it is a, if you are performing 2 point dft so it would be w 0 2 and top will always be so here in if you see the upper one is x0 capital x0 it is equal to x0 plus x1 total factor of uh, whatever is the current uh, w02 okay. on the contrary what is the x1 capital x1 it is x0 minus of x1 why because this yesterday we have discussed w02 is 1 e to the power 0 is basically 1 now coming to the 4 point f50 so when we perform the 4 point f50 the stage 1 we have to perform 2 point dft then using the outputs from here we have to perform the 4 point dft in the stage 2 so let's see how it happens so 2 point dft means we have to plug these numbers so where will be our uh, imaginary line we have clubbed these two numbers so my imaginary line is over here so a is nothing but x0 plus x2 because w02 is 1 similarly for the next clubbing this is the imaginary number c equals to x1 plus x3 and at the bottom we have d equals to x1 minus x3 we have performed this now we have completed that 2 point dft now we have to enter into the stage 2 to compute the 4 point dft now when we are trying to compute the 4 point dft we have to club phone numbers so all these phone numbers have to be taken okay so what is the middle line the middle line is somewhere here right now <clears throat> you have to just look into the thing on the top we are having two lines 
at the bottom we are having uh, two lines okay what we have to do from the top line the signal will flow to the top line after the division similarly from that line it will go to the topmost line okay now what we are having see at this location we are having a and at this location we are having c right <coughs> so what it is happening x0 equals to small a plus small c because w0 pole is 1 okay so c is at this location sorry it would be at this location c multiplied by w0 pole a similarly here it will be a minus c now in the second line since we are performing four point dft if you see we are having w04 next one will be w14 okay so again from the second line to second line from here to here again second to second so what is w14 it is minus j right it is minus j right so we are having here b minus j into here we are having d b minus jd and here in b directly it is coming then minus of j multiplied by minus 1 plus of jd are you did you get my point so it would be now x0 x1 x2 x3 in the normal order because it is then dit fft because it is a dit fft okay and if you see our input is in the decimated order our input is in the decimated order coming to the uh, 8 point dft see at the first instance we have performed two point dft in the second instance second stage we have performed four point dft right in the third instance we have to perform eight point dft okay since if you see over here everything is w08 and all this thing so this is equal to basically w02 because both are one right likewise here in when you are performing uh, this thing what is this w04 you can write which is equal to w14 y nk by capital n nk here is 2 by 8 equals to 1 by 4 we can write so w14 we have written here in it is w08 I prefer to write as we go from stage 1 to stage 2 because for me it is easier to remember but if you want to use uh, these notations also they are same as I told you over here right because if you see in this one when we are performing uh, 2 point DFT we are taking the total factor of the 2 point when we came to 8 point DF, uh, 4 point DFT it's easier to remember W04, W14 in the serial wise number. When we are coming to 8 point, it is W08, W18, W28, W38. And the rest of the calculations remains the same. Now, if you see in the 8 point DFT, what is the middle line? This is the middle line. So, from here to topmost point, it is going. So, say line 1 to line 1 dash. Okay, so signal from line 1 to line 1 dash it is coming, right? Then the second one 2 to 2 dash, there is exchange of uh, what you call values, then 3 to 3 dash, there is exchange of values, and then 4 to 4 dash, there are 
exchange of values. Are you getting my point? So, <clears throat> here in what I have done is that I have made a table, a table uh, so that all the calculation you can see in the tabular form. Many a times I have seen students while drawing this, uh, what happens? They write the numbers in between and then they do mistake. Okay. So, to avoid that, I have made this table. So, that table is self-explanatory, uh, but still I will uh, explain it to you. But performing the numericals in a tabular manner, uh, it uh, will save you from doing uh, some mistakes, calculation errors. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, however, if you are given with the question to perform DIT FFT, you have to make the butterfly architecture. Okay, so what is the input and after calculation of the output, what is the output, you have to put it over there. But you can do the calculation in the tabular form. Even if you do in the uh, architecture, I do not have any problem, but then it has to be correct. Okay. So here in, what happens in, I have again clubbed the signals x0, x4, x2, x1, uh, x2, x6, like this and this, right? In the decimal input is in the decimated order. Now, in the top layer, we have the total factor. Top point is always 1 when we are pairing it up, and this is the total factor W0. Two. Again, top one is 1, total factor of W0. Two. Likewise, all the total factors are there. Then, in the topmost part, we are having addition. And at the bottom part, we are having the subtraction. Similarly, over here also and here also. Then, in the second stage, what happens? Top two lines, they are having a value of 1 by default. Next two points, they will be having a, uh, the uh, yeah, total factors. So, this is W04 and the next one is W14. Right? So, now what will happen? A double dash, uh, it will be equal to A dash plus C dash because there is a multiplier of 1. Then in the second, uh, similarly, at this location, it is just the addition becomes subtraction. In the second point, if you see B double dash equals to B dash minus of J D dash. And similarly, over here there is a change of sign. Similarly, in the bottom layer also, bottom lines also. Which one? Yeah. Huh, this one will be D double dash. Yeah. No, there is an yeah, error. So, this would be D double dash. So, yeah, so this D double dash will take. Now, uh, what is happening? A double dash plus E double dash. And this would, third stage is the output because this is the third layer of, uh, third stage of here, which is where we are performing 8 point DFT. So, the topmost points, they are 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and the bottom one are the a total factor values, whatever we have calculated. So, see x0 and x4 there, there are change in a values. Here then, just uh, a what you call sign. Here also and here also if you see, just change in the sign. And in this way you implement it. Right? Now, when we go for the IDFT, inverse discrete Fourier transform, so, what we do is that instead of using the total factor, we use conjugate of total factor. That means wherever there are these j components, its sign will change. If it is negative, it will become positive and so on. So, if you see over here and here, the sign is changed. And while we are doing the IDFT, if you see 
IDFT means frequency domain to the time domain. Okay, butterfly architecture is same. Though I am saying that it is DIT method. The DIT method is basically for the forward transform. Okay, but we are using it for the inverse transform also. Your input should always be in the decimated when you are performing uh, uh, inverse uh, discrete Fourier transform through the DIT FFT method. Okay, so input is frequency and see these are in the decimated order. Okay, here if you see the conjugate systems, they are having opposite signs. So here, if you see minus, here it is plus, here it is minus, here it is plus, and here also this conjugate this thing there is a change in the value, this sign. Okay, the rest of the method remains same. However, there is an additional stage, stage four, because when we perform this inverse DFT, there is a term. 1 by n conjugate of a into x of k. Okay. So, herein we need to have an 1 by n multiplier, so, uh, 1 by n multiplier where n is the signal length. If you are going for 4 point DFT, it would be uh, 1 by 4. If you are going for 2 point DFT, it would be 1 by 2, like that. Okay. No, there is no overlap. If you see, there is no overlap. Oh, I didn't get you. How is it? How there is a possibility? It's uh, always I told you you have to find out the middle point, okay? And from the middle point, say line one to line one dash, okay? So suppose this is a, a will come here, here, okay? Then if you have b over here, b multiplied by this one, so plus of b here minus of b because there is a multiplier of minus 1. Okay. Below this line of symmetry, we will be having the total factor plus there will be a multiplier of minus 1. And that is what ch uh, changes the, the sign. Okay. So, this is how it goes on. Okay. So, this is this we will cover next time. Yeah. So IDFT, I told you, uh, it can be performed in two ways. IDFT one and IDFT two. So today I will just uh, discuss this uh, DIT FFT. Uh, XK is a uh, as the input. In DIT FFT, it is in the reverse order. We have to take the conjugate in both the systems. So Total factor should we get the A and the output which is the XN, it should be in the normal order. There is another method, uh, but I don't like that one, wherein you have to calculate the conjugate of the frequency components, then perform FFT and get X, uh, X dash conjugate N. Then again, you have to take the conjugate of that signal to get x dash in, and then you have to perform 1 by n. So I avoid that because if I only take the conjugate of the total factor, I will get the same result. So doing conjugation, um, uh, making the numbers conjugate twice, it's not. Uh, I, I mean to say that uh, I can save some time. Basically, right? So I don't like this second again. But if you want to do it, you are free to do it in the examination. It's your wish. Both the uh, methods they will give you the same result.
Okay. <clears throat> now, let us calculate the 4 point DFT. I hope you have understood the method. So, please try to calculate this number. You are given with xn equals to 0, 1, 2, 3. And please find